Say my taste is in anime is trash one more time, and I'm gonna break your other arm. Yeah, bitch. She ain't talking oh. to me. <laughs> 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 yes. Flowers with the one broken arm. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> how the hell? How many painkillers are you on right now? God, look, I got, uh, I weaned myself off of them. All right. They gave me both the ibuprofen and the strong painkiller. It's like, yeah, this one's extra strong. I forget what the actual name of it was, but I have it at home if you need it. <laughs> Tylenol 3, a Vicodin. Is Oxy a painkiller? Yes. Oxy? You don't know the name of the pill that you got? No, I have no idea. You oh, just man. sold it on the street that fast? Yeah. I just, <laughs> boo! They just stick you in the arm with the horse tranquilizer and be like, all right, <laughs> you're on your way. <laughs> God. But yeah, that was... A, rest, what happened? It was so stupid, man. It was the worst. So I would say objectively, 70-30, you know, 30% my fault, 70% society's fault okay okay mm. i was riding my bike to work i do that a lot last year nearly every day this year i had to maintain my bike so i didn't do it until like maybe two weeks ago right so i start oh well, three weeks ago i start riding my bike i'm on the side of the road and then i can tell i'm getting squeezed off the road for sure by dumbass drivers so i'm like okay i need to get off the road there's this guy you can tell behind me is like this guy's not moving i am getting pushed out so i go to the sidewalk and i have like about a second to decide because I see a garbage bin on one area, a tree branch on the other, and in between is a sweet spot of just riding through. One second. Do I want to slow down? No. Boom! Oh! <laughs> so I fucking fall. I fall forward. Thankfully, I have a helmet. So everyone out there, please get a helmet. My head start boom. <laughs> I put my hand out because I think the best call is absorb into boom. But I absorbed into, boom. so my left arm is fucked. Uh, I went to, I walked, this is where it gets fucked up. I walked to work. This was during a meeting. I'm like, hey guys, late for the meeting because of this. This was an LCS day. This yes. is like meeting the, the day of. The day of work. So you're going in there for the first meeting and then you wait about like an hour or two hours until the actual broadcast begins. I go in there, I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry guys. I fell off my bike. It's all good. Like. This was scratched up. My left arm, I couldn't really move. But I was like, it's not that big of a deal. I'll, maybe it's like a funny bone in something and I'll get feeling back into it again. Um, but then I go to my PAs, respect to them. Uh, Joel is a brother out there. And I, I was like, yeah, so I think I'll be fine. I'm just going to work today and I'm going to be good. And he was like, mm, <laughs> you know, we could take you to the hospital if you want, like, you should just get it checked out. I was like, and while he's like giving me these looks and be like, you sure you should go, you should go. I was like, fine. Just in case it's not like a permanent problem. I go there. Yeah. Fracture in your elbow. <laughs> like, and by the way, when I'm in the car of one of the PAs that's helping me, bless him, Lucas, love you out there. Um, it hits the pain hits oh, no. because it's starting to swell. I'm sure. So like, I feel bad for him because that PA was on the job for like his, his first month on the job. And I'm out here right next to him making fall damage noises. <laughs> He's like, what? The? <laughs> like, literally every half second, because either it's like pulsating or something where I'm just like in excruciating pain if I move my arm or I don't know, nothing happens. I have no idea why I'm in. But every five seconds, I'd be like, and he's just like <laughs> driving. You just have a T.O.T. on you. Like, Ugh. yes. I was Ugh. like, what? He's definitely like, what the fuck, man? So we get, and I have my first North American uh, healthcare experience. <gasps> U.S. healthcare experience. Do, do, so biggest question. Yes. Do you have insurance? I have insurance. Oh, thank God. So I have insurance, but the first place we go to, yeah, we don't take Kaiser Permanente. And I was like, fuck. And they were like, should I just go out of pocket for this one? It's a $200 consultation. It's like, no, I know I have a problem with my arm. It's going to be more than just a consultation. So I'm like, let's find the next location. So we are now in a 30-minute drive oh, as I am continuing yeah. to make fall damage noises. And my the PA, Lucas, who's once again a beautiful person who's helping me out there, is like definitely like, I don't want to fuck up. And this guy is going through pain every second on the road with multiple points of traffic. So I go in. The first place in urgent care is like, yeah, there's a three. I just said, hey, I have my broke arm is like maybe, you know, broken. I don't know. Someone from the farthest side of the office is like, it's a three hour wait. 
I'm like, ah, oh, shit. She's like, yeah, there's like an emergency room there. You can go there and it'll be faster. We go there. And as it'll, and I go to the emergency room, they're like, yeah, it's a two hour wait. And I was like, what the fuck? But one minute later, nurse comes out, and says, is there a Baranto Muhammad? And I was like, okay, I guess she's just lying to me. <laughs> so I got, it was all good by that point. Uh, the night after, as I'm in this was extremely painful. Uh, most pain I've ever had, period. But Damn. I woke up the next morning. Still there, but super doable. Now I'm good. Now I can do this. Well, I'm glad you're doing better, dude. Damn. Yeah. I'm vibing now. Tomorrow I have an extra appointment with bone doctors to figure out how much I really fucked up my arm. But early indication is I'm okay. Early All indication right. is because I can move my arm, fingers like this, it's probably, we're probably fine in like three or four weeks. Well, I'm glad that you're alive. I'm glad that you're okay. I think the best thing uh, that I heard from your story was that you were wearing a helmet. Yes. I am so thankful because that was the first thing I was going to ask was like, was your dumb ass wearing a helmet? Yep. So like, it could have been worse. Look, like, I'm a helmet wear. I'll even wear a helmet if I'm <laughs> playing <laughs> league game. Yes. <laughs> <Are you kidding? laughs> sitting there. There's a football helmet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready for this game. Or if I'm on my first date, I'll wear a helmet. Or well, let's just say the first time I went fucking, I had a helmet. <laughs> I'm going to say, I'm a little jealous, though, that you had a PA drive you to the hospital. Yeah. Because when I was at Riot and uh, doing LCS and stuff, when I fell to the ground thinking that I had like appendicitis or something where the pain was so intense in my stomach that I physically could not stand up yeah. where I was like, Oh, that hurt. Yeah, that's okay. I'm not a bitch. Stand back up again. Boom. Just hit the fucking ground in pain in the fetal position. Yeah. They called an ambulance and they charged me three grand to drive me 15 minutes down the road. Oh, I would have slug crawled. Just that sounds awful. I didn't know that that's what they were going to charge because that was my first time. I was like probably 22 years old. I'm like, okay, cool. I, I'm still under my parents' health care, which okay, is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still have my parents' insurance. Yeah. Let's fucking go. Yeah. But it was like, no, boom, ambulance charge, two, three grand. I'm like, ah. And then it was kidney stones. Oh, wait, when did that happen? That was... You weren't. You that were. That was a long time ago. I don't think you I, were I think in LCS. You were still in LPL because that was back 20, 2018 or something. Yeah, wasn't it? Uh, or 2019. not twenty eighteen. I want to say twenty nineteen. Okay. Probably. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I just hit the fucking floor. I think it was like the first week of a uh, summer split or something like that. So yeah. June or July. And I remember being in the old little makeup area where it's where I would sit, talk with the teams and prep for interviews. And then I remember pastry time being in the chair because this is when like me and pastry were swapping back and forth between interviews. Yeah, I don't okay. know, it didn't make sense. Uh, but I remember hitting the floor and then I think like one of the teams won and I'm like, okay, I got to go do the interview. I'm Gone. on the floor yeah. and I'm doing this thing where I'm like, pastry take the mic you're gonna have to do the interview <laughs> go on without me and pastry's just looking at me like what the fuck are you doing and i'm yeah. like oh does he I, just think it's a bit he, i don't know he was just <laughs> looking at me like like I, I was about to do an australian accent but i can't uh <laughs> let me see crikey is this girls on their period then <laughs> what, what the fuck was is that is that an australian accent no no you then went to a british accent at the end no that was perfect it was horrendous you know we try but you know, I'm glad that you're feeling okay. Yeah, much better. I will say now that I'm not going through pain, I'm going through the pain of not having an arm. So I have to change my hobbies entirely. Uh, so video games, not on the table, unless if it's TFT, which the patch now is freezing every game. So that's not on the table either. So I'm reading manga, watching anime. Um, also, another thing that's quite debilitating is Golden Boy on Twitter said it correctly. That was my passion arm that's out of commission. So... Mm. <laughs> I can't even jack it at night. Like, <laughs> like, like, dude, I was about to make a jerk it off joke and then you just did it for me. Yeah. So I can't do that. Taking a shower, wiping my ass, go like, guys, it's hard out here. <laughs> so wait, I honestly curious, uh, what is it? Newark summer finals is coming up. Are you going to be fine to travel? I, I'm going to be fine. We'll just have to see what the doctors say. They're like, specifically, you can't get on a flight or you can't go to New Jersey. Those guys will, <laughs> will beat you up. They'll fuck you up. They'll fuck you up. <laughs> They'll fuck you. I mean, who knows? Someone might even find a rumor, river, swim across it. Yeah. Do some, do some crazy. But no, 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 before we get to that shit, though, okay. before we get to that okay. shit, um, you guys see the hip new piece of League of Legends content that was released today? No. Which one? 
uh, you know, just one of the standard really good League of Legends LCS journalism in which Travis Gafford uh. assigns movie stars to League of Legends players, casters, and community members as to who would play them in a movie. Because I thought he did need justice. He did yeah, I justice. saw yours. Yeah. I saw your... <laughs> I was vibing. The moment he said that I was Zendaya, I was like... <laughs> Maybe he got mistaken there. Add a few more words. Want to be with Zendaya? I like that. Be Zendaya. Okay, that's fair. I'll take that too. Wait, so you don't feel like you're a Zendaya? I could be a Zendaya. I don't feel like a Zendaya. It's Zendaya, yeah. Okay, I don't feel like a Zendaya. You don't feel... Does it make you feel bad that he made you a woman in this type of casting? It was a little demeaning. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like Stephen A. Smith is way worse. Than <laughs> yeah, what the fuck is he saying about my hairline? Stephen what is Smith, that? That's way worse. Oh <laughs> that's what God. he's saying. My hairline. That's, that's fucked a real up. insult. So I want to, and Ian, maybe you can look this up, but I want to shout out to the Casters Couch Discord uh, because one of our users, Ian's going to pull up the name in just a second, um, actually dropped this in our memes channel. Oh. So they definitely wanted to talk about this because they said, wow, this is probably some of Travis's worst takes ever. Okay. In the history of everything. All right. Um, I think he, the only one that he got that was kind of okay was Rush Hour for Peter and uh, Aphromoo because, mm -hmm. of course, Double Lift Aphromoo, we've known them as Rush Hour since like 20 freaking 15. Yeah. Um, but Flowers, you were Brad I'm Pitt. I'm cool with mine, dude. I get to be Brad Pitt. I've watched Fight Club like 25 times. There this it is. is. <laughs> that works for me. I'm chilling. Does okay. Travis owe you money how did you end up with brad yeah, I, I i think travis must have expected me to flame him if he didn't give me somebody <laughs> cool or something so you know what i'm cool with it fuck it i'll take brad pitt dude hell yeah that's pretty good i have a different actor in mind for you all right who you got i feel like maybe you might not know him i know ian definitely knows him uh in terms of like body shape it's not going to be a flower's body shape but in terms of spirituality a hundred percent match Ooh, I'm ready burt kreishner no idea who that is. The machine. The machine. Bert, I'm, oh, I got I've <laughs> I've shown him this act before. Hundred percent. Bert Kreischer. Yeah. Uh, does the whole redneck get up? Does the whole like shtick and something? You know, he's a family man now, which is like a little bit departed from Flowers. But young Bert Kreischer is a hundred percent Flowers, a spirit machine. animal. You know. What this I'd... guy don't have a beer belly. He got the whole goddamn keg. <laughs> <laughs> And you know what? Spiritually, Flowers, I think that you're the same. You know who he is? You know who I think he is? Julian from Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> you know, I love Trailer Park Boys. I've seen every episode. There it is. Yeah. When you yeah. fall over, you make sure you don't spill your drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think the other people that Travis had was he had uh, the mountain as a narrow, because a narrow has said that he is the True. mountain on multiple occasions. Yes. Uh, now, he did say that La Tigris was Selena Gomez. Yeah. I'm just going to go out on a limb, and I'm going to think that he literally just tried to think of the first Latina woman that came to mind and came to Selena Gomez. <laughs> the same thing for you. I don't think he could think of a single black actor. <laughs> uh, look, I was half tempted that he was going to go Will Smith. <laughs> I thought he was going Will Smith. What can I say? I was like, when are we going? Will Smith? Bro, you could have had the Barack easiest, Obama, the easiest quote tweet ever, and just look at the camera and say, "Keep my name out your mouth." <laughs> 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 I was like, "Okay, it didn't go that direction." Uh, real quick before we forget, it was our uh, Hidgy Daddy from our Discord. Hidgy, Hidgy Daddy, I'm sure I'm. What's up, Hidgy Daddy? Thank Hidgy, you, Hidgy Daddy. Daddy. Thank you so much. Uh, that actually reminds me of the thing that frustrated me the most out of that video. Because, you know, he's oh, going through, he's going through flowers and he's like, yeah, this person's this person. This person is this person. And who am I, Travis Gafford, who will play me in the movie? Oh, none other than Pedro Pascal. Motherfucker thinks that he's going to be played by the internet's daddy when he's looking like the internet's creepy fucking uncle. Hey. I don't think hey, so. Calm down. He's a hot dad, too. <laughs> he got a hot dad, by what are you talking about? <laughs> He's got the vibe. He's got the facial hair. Who, All right. who, who's a hot dad? Travis Gafford. <laughs> what, one more time, Rancher. Travis Gafford. Who's, who's a hot dad? <laughs> Travis Gafford is a hot dad. I am present on this couch. And I'm really confused what's going on around me. Like, All right. Uh, that's a choice. Ovely is on an ardent crusade against Travis's page of opinion. And Raz is just over here pre reading from the book of Gaff. Like, <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't know. I came into your house. I saw a picture of Travis Gap. Oh, I mean Pedro Travis Gap. <laughs> <laughs> I... For yeah, clarification, I, I couldn't. I could tell the difference. For clarification, I have a picture of Pedro Pascal like mounted on my wall, and then right underneath it, it's a baby, baby Yoda, baby Grogu, just looking up at Pedro. It's so True. cute. Neither of you have watched Mandalorian. No. It'd be great. I haven't, but I know a Yoda figure when I've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> it's you just don't know what an attractive man looks right. like. <laughs> I don't need to know what an attractive man looks like. So you just wake up. You wash your face, you look up in the mirror, and you just go, ah, yes, this is the face of someone who's going to call Travis Gaffer daddy. <laughs> hey, I don't know what's going to happen like eight hours from my morning, but I'm never disappointed. <laughs> just a disclaimer, Raz is on a lot of pain medication right now. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, Raz is, Raz is on them horse tranquilizers. <laughs> I wish. He's like, I feel good I want to give this. you some leeway to walk this back later. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's just the cut right there. Yeah. Jesus. Freak I was Christ. doing so well, too. At, like, <laughs> cooking for myself, go, working out. And then day one, I'm like, fuck it. I'm ordering McDonald's. I'm drinking a can of Coke again, even though I've said I wasn't. And I haven't drank Coke for like two weeks. So I'm like, no, no, it's a special occasion. Did, did you order McDonald's that didn't show up to your house? That happened before. But it, I've done this multiple times. But it, it happens. Sometimes I have weird three o'clock in the morning McDonald's show up at my house and I don't never know what to do with it. Look, I, I promise that's not me. It. Yeah. Even though I have your address on my DoorDash. Yeah, I know. That's why I always assumed it was you because you're the only one that ever orders McDonald's to my house at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm promising you that's not me unless I was randomly high that night. <laughs> but that's not, that has not happened. Because I got high. So because, because I, I got high. high. It's 50 50 because I got, got high. high. Whether it was you or not. <laughs> yeah. It might have been me. I don't know. You guys are fucking degenerates. Okay. Well, back <laughs> on topic. This is coming from someone who just came back from Vegas. Okay. You two are the most degenerate motherfuckers that I've yeah. seen. And I watched these big old girls with these huge feathers and stuff walking around with booty cheeks out. Oh, I needed that. They were, <laughs> like, respectfully, yeah. respectfully. Yeah. There was a lot of booty cheeks. We need to go to um, Vegas. I was Vegas, in Vegas man. for Evo 2023. Shout out to the FGC. Holy Woo. crap. So that was my first Evo. That was yeah. also probably my biggest, like, uh, fighting games event that I've been to. Fuck the League of Legends community. The yeah. fighting games fandom yeah. is where it's at. I don't know if... Have you been to I've Evo I've never been to any though? fighting game anything. It's have a you? goal. I've always wanted to go to Evo, but I haven't. But I've gone to like weeklies before. I just haven't been to a big convention. It's everyone there. So first off, it is definitely the most inclusive community and fan base, yeah. period. Yeah. As long as you are genuine and authentic about liking the game... They don't give a fuck who you are. You're welcome. Yeah. So there's a huge like trans community, um, furry community, LGBT community, cosplayer community, like so many people there fucking open and welcome. Um, they have crazy accessibility options in a lot of their games like Street Fighter 6 where we watched a blind man win his set on stage. Yep. Crazy. Um, they had all of these different people there. Crunchyroll was there mm. with a huge booth where they had like a J-pop idol singing. Uh, they had a huge Chipotle thing. Riot was there debuting like their demo of Project L that was Ooh, like, nice. I think that's the first time that Project L was playable to the general public and not just invited influencers and yeah. stuff. Um, I went with FlyQuest. FlyQuest had like their little booth where they were sponsoring like top 16 uh, players that didn't have a team they're like oh you made top 16 here's 200 dollars and a stick hey, punk went far you guys were streaming right yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah so we streamed for a little bit i met punk do you follow punk i love punk, punk. To God? love punk he's insane man so freaking funny yes he is yeah he was incredible he made uh top three top or three four. yeah mm -hmm. top three he was really close to getting top two but yeah. uh got clutched out by mena, mena rd so like he is just punk is the best North American Street Fighter player, mm -hmm. period. And w honestly, like I thought that was an upset that he lost to Mena Armady. Mena Armady is great. Like he's an incredible player. So good. Yeah, but like punk and Angry Bird were for sure. Like they're great friends, and they were, they were in the winners finals. They had before even the the tournament had started. Um, Say Jam on cast had mentioned the fact that they had played uh, against each other, and like traded games off of each other so they were coming into the tournament pretty hyped up okay um but we'll talk about it that top six was insane 
Talk about it now. Tell me about that top six. Woo! Again, I came as the scrub. You're a returning fan. Dude, I I love Street Fighter. It always, like, watching Evo and Cap Cup um, always gets me to play the game. I was going to play a game, but you know where I'm at right now. Mm. Um, Oops. But, man. So, first of all, Angry Bird winning is insane. He is a he's a player that I think he lives in the UAE um, alongside his brother, Big Bird. And they stream a lot. And everything there's a they for them they travel a lot because there's not a lot of tournaments that happen in their uh part right so they end up traveling to europe a lot for events so it's a big investment for them to be able to make it out to tournaments like these Mm -hmm. um so the fact that they or angry bird specifically went to um this event and this is his biggest win by a large margin oh real yeah like it's crazy because he busts he busts his ass um and it felt like every event that i had watched um and on stream and everything like that and so the fact that he was able to make it to this event and big bird honestly was the player what that was everyone was hyped for initially yeah because um he has been playing a long time and everybody he let's say big bird is the one that's like the fan favorite right okay but the fact that angry bird came out of nowhere um alongside big bird was really they support each other and everything that they do and the fact that he went to the finals and won it on such a big stage for who he is as a person, what he represents for the UAE, um, was incredible. Punk, so, go on. Look, just a point of clarification for somebody yeah. as somebody who doesn't know anything about any of this. So, is Evo like the equivalent of like fighting game worlds? It's like a big deal, right? Yes. Okay. It's the equivalent to fighting game worlds. Sure, Street Fighter specifically will use that event to funnel into Capcom Cup. Okay. Um, but everyone from the fighting game community, from uh, Smash Bros community that will always like rally for their games to get in uh, to Guilty Gear to just any anime games that are out there um, to get to this event. Left and one Guilty Gear, by the way, there it melee is. player with splitting time ended mm-hmm. up taking all of Guilty Gear. But something I want to point out, Raz, when we think of like you're talking about, oh, is it fighting games worlds? And we think of worlds, we think of like the million dollar prize pool, right? We think about TI, yeah. uh, the prize pool is the multi millions and all that shit. Mm-hmm. Guess the prize pool for Street Fighter Six, just overall. Twenty grand. Well, actually, it's much higher. Uh, first place takes home twenty grand, so the entire prize pool is seventy grand. Mm-hmm. And then for all the other games, it was an estimated about twenty five grand uh, prize pool for each thing, so it was like ten k. This fan base, though, is so freaking passionate. I love it so much. But one thing I want to talk about with the original uh, passion with the fans and everything, Project L. Mm. Project L was playable and at EVO 2023. And all of the Street Fighter players, the Guilty Gear players, the Tekken players, the Dragon Ball Fighters players, all of them came out to try to test it, get their first, uh, basically like first hands on it. And every single person that I spoke to was super pumped and excited. And they said that this game is definitely going to be the one uh, that changes up the FGC forever. Um, with it, I know neither of you have played it yet. No, I have not. Neither of you have played it yet. I got to play it. Producer Ian got to play it a little bit with me, uh, with some of the devs. Shout out to all the devs. We had Alex, Sean, and Eric, I think. Mm-hmm. Amazing people showing us the game. Um, so for, I know you're not a huge fighting game fan, it's a kind of like a dual tag team fighter. Mm-hmm. So instead of just one-on-one, you could potentially have two-on-two. Is it like I swap my guy out? Like yes. I'm, yeah. so I'm playing Skarner and now I switch to Jarvan? Or is it like both Skarner and Jarvan are on the field? At the same no, 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 no. One, one at a time. It's tag okay. team. There but are it, different ways in which you can tag your partner in and yeah. you can do combos together with your partner. Yeah. Cool. yeah, yeah the mechanics cool. are really cool. Watch the trailer video that Riot has released and everything. But uh, one of the things is that they've really added like a lot of simplicity to the game so there's no quarter circle back circle up circle Mm. do all of this crazy stuff this 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 there's still combos and everything but it's very simplified to the point where if you're a league of legends fan like moi you could just jump straight into it button mash and get in and then hopefully have your teammate carry you shout out to alex for carrying my ass nice it's so freaking good um i can't wait to jump into it well i mean it sounds like they're remembering the foundations that league of legends itself was built on in the first place i mean league came after dota and back in the day when all of the the people that were hardcore dota fans were making fun of league oh this is just dota for babies game's too easy too simple it's like no it turns out if you get rid of a lot of obtuse mechanics that serve as a barrier to keep people from wanting to try the game yeah it makes it so your player base expands exponentially and like you get so much popularity so that is pretty cool especially as somebody who's like 
I've just invested so much time into League of Legends. Most PvP games just automatically turn me off because I'm like, I don't want to spend 500 fucking hours to get at a baseline passable level on this yeah. game. Like just getting my ass beat over and over again. So if you can jump in and at least have some sort of usable skill level, like I don't expect to win every match. Let me, well, let me, let me be clear. Let me be clear. If you've never played fighting games before and you go against someone who's played fighting games well, before, yeah. the characters are like, the gameplay yeah. is very fucking similar. So I think Ian was saying, playing Yasuo and going, oh, this guy is Strider. And I was like, I don't know who the fuck that is but Ari still looks cute as fuck so I'm gonna keep doing this that's interesting so yeah it does come it does look like a Marvel kind of game Marvel Marvel like tag Marvel? Team game. Marvel, Marvel, Marvel baby Marvel. It, it feels like the good days of Marvel versus Capcom too. okay that's good yeah. I love that so yeah. I love that style of fighter it's fast pace mm -hmm. I love the simplicity that you're talking about I want to see if it impairs like skill level when you go a little higher but i don't think i think the people the, the the developers that are working on it are really fucking good at their job care. so i don't think that's gonna happen um and i do think that fighting games to the point that you're making these days have gone above and beyond at trying to include new players um okay. that's cool have to. yeah exactly like that's something that they've always been pushing for and fighting for like the new street fighter actually so kind of going back a little bit to the street fighter 6 tournament like there was a modern uh controls player in haitani and Sure, it worked out for Haitani. Modern controls just means that like, hey, do you have problems like inputting certain combos? It is now just a button push um, for certain characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like that makes it super easy for some people that are like, well, I don't know the classic controls. I don't know the quarter circle, this, or um, like half circle, blah, blah, blah. Like, I don't yeah. know how to do this, but like this button so suddenly makes it much easier for me to be competitive versus other players. And we love that. So it's yeah. like, instead of down back AB to shoot a fireball, it's just like right bumper. Yeah, or something Yay. like that. And another thing too is, I hope this one, this game has it in Project L, but just like a robust tutorial for new players to come in and learn what the basic mechanics are. Because Guilty Gear does that exceptionally well. I think mm. Guilty Gear Strive, when I was playing it, is like, wow, I now understand, like they go through the entire process of how to do certain moves. Yeah, Riot's had tutorials in the past, so I don't think they're, they're gonna yeah. have an issue with we'll it. We'll see, I'm looking forward to but it. But what I'm hoping mm -hmm. that we get to see is that passionate fucking fan base from fighting games, I want them to come over and join the toxic fan base from League of Legends. I want to see them merge together and I want to see fucking brawls. Uh -oh. Okay? I want to see like if they use the LCS arena, excuse me, the Riot Games arena, mm -hmm. home of LCS and Valorant and soon to be Project L. I want to see players like fucking getting up and fighting and throwing punches. I got so excited since we saw that random like Dragon Ball fighter fan who lost his Krillin, start trying to beat up his opponent. Oh, true! Right, that was it. Like, he lost to Krillin, bro! And he just comes <laughs> and he starts fucking swinging. Yeah. Um, you want to talk about uh, another fight that happened uh, this weekend? Let's talk about that it. That kind of went viral. Let's talk about it. Flowers, have you ever been to Montgomery, Alabama? I've never been to Alabama. That's... Uh... <laughs> You're not missing much. No, I've I've never I've never been to. I don't know you look like the Montgomery, Alabama type. <laughs> uh, your people tried some shit in a small town. Is for, <laughs> what is this? <laughs> fisherman, students, fishermen. So um, so basically, I think it was uh, this weekend uh, a scuffle of sorts happened. Yeah. Uh, yeah, on, on, on the riverside of uh, Montgomery, Alabama, that absolutely went fucking crazy viral. Uh, the quick TLDR is essentially, there was a group of white dudes who incorrectly docked their boat in the way of like the huge ferry that's supposed to come down this way. So a black security guard, it is important that I note, note that he is black, a black security guard, dock worker comes by and he's like, hey, white dudes here, you can't park your boat here. Yeah. White dudes are like, Fuck you, start shoving. Mm -hmm. Black security guard takes off his hat, throws that shit up like the bat signal, and they all start brawling. So it's, it's a black flare gun. Black <laughs> flare gun. <laughs> the black Batman symbol. Like so then the one black guy starts taking on like these three or four white dudes. He's winning at first. This other random white dude from like far right screen just runs in and tackles this dude the black guy black guy's on the ground and now there's like three or four other white guys who are just wailing on him and then the camera kind of like zooms out a little bit this is just one person standing on the riverside filming all of the other dock workers all of, and most of them if not all of them are black start running in and the start cavalry. beating the shit yep. out of the other white guys including 
black Aquaman who jumps into the river and is just like swimming across the fucking river to join in on the brawl. And Raz, you saw it. It went crazy. Chairs were being like thrown. I never laughed so hard in my life <laughs> when I saw the steel chair come out. Oh! Just straight out of the WWE. <laughs> yeah, I was like, where the fuck did he get the steel chair? And then when this, when this old white woman who was already in a scuffle like sat down, he was like, oh, another target. Boom! Right on her head. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so it just it starts off as some dudes being dickheads over getting told to move their boat and yes. turns into an all-out brawl with just a whole dock full of people beating the shit out of each other. Mm-hmm. Yes, it was. Or Eric Cartman just running down the school hallway going, race war! Race war! Race war! That, it, when I saw Black Aquaman, I knew it was over for those white guys. <laughs> fucking done. Yes. They, again, Flowers, they tried that in a small town. I don't know why I'm being... <laughs> Stop bullying flowers. What? Flowers is the diversity hire on this podcast. <laughs> oh. All I'm saying is if you were spawned in that exact location and done nothing wrong, a black fist would have met your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> For no particular reason, rather than a, an assumption. <laughs> I think the best stuff... Go ahead, flowers. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just doing my thing where I look off at the camera and shake my head. <laughs> <laughs> the, the best things that came from this scuffle, though, was yeah, all of the Montgomery. social media commentary. All of the social media commentary. Yeah. It was like people commenting uh, like they were casting like a WWE match. There were people who were like dropping all the memes and stuff. People practicing their chair jutsu for like the next round True. or something. Oh, it was just so freaking good. That was probably the greatest street fight or boat fight. Dock that's fight. a dock fight, that's a man. Dock that's fight. <laughs> There'll never be a dock fight as good as that one. That's, I'm just putting it out there. All time dock fights. That's the best <laughs> top <dock> tier. <laughs> so I'm going to make a list of the top 10 dock fights. That's all 10. <laughs> that's all. <laughs> it was definitely a selectable map in like a fighting game. Like, yes. <laughs> Wait, that's the literally just 10. <laughs> Well, yeah. That's Ken from Street Fighter. There, there, there's one in Street Fighter, isn't there? It's like you're down by the docks. Yes. Yeah. Shit. That's literally just Ken. <laughs> yeah, they're going to beat up a Honda Civic there. Yeah. So and, oh my God, if we go to the exact dock fight, like, location in Street Fighter, there's like a white woman and everything on the boats going like this, cheering on. <laughs> Ken, <laughs> Ken's on the dock. <laughs> Someone take Ken out there. <laughs> Oh no. Oh, he better keep an eye out for those steel chairs. <laughs> He's getting his ass beat by Balrog. <laughs> so, not only did we have an all out brawl this past weekend, but we also had a riot in New York. We did have a riot did in you, New York. Did you hear about that at all, Flowers? I have no idea what this is. Okay, Raz, Flowers needs to get on Black People Twitter. You do need to get on Black People Twitter. Black, black People Twitter. TikTok, Black, t- black People Twitter. I'm not black like people any Instagram. people TikTok. I don't have TikTok. Are you on Black People Twitch? <laughs> I, what is Black what People is Twitch? That? You know what? The, <laughs> oh, fact, well. the fact that you're asking this question, racism. Racism. I'm, racism. <laughs> racism. You don't even know. You would have gotten your ass thrown into that river. Mm-hmm. Well, me too, but... Yeah. yeah I was going to say, you're half white. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> and half Japanese. Sure. They'll look at me and they'll try to figure me out for a little bit and go, ah, river, just to be safe. Yep. <laughs> just, <laughs> just to be safe. Oh, just to no. be safe. Just I wouldn't case. get the chair, yeah. but I would definitely get my ass You would get it. There's at least, at least in there. Yeah, at least thrown off. Yeah, at least. I'll get, I'll get a solid slap or a punch. Yeah. But okay, so since chair. I'm not on black people TikTok or black people Twitter. Or what, black people Twitch. Or I'm... <laughs> A white person. I don't. <laughs> Do you know who Martin Luther King is? Yes, I know who Martin. Luther okay, there was a hesitation there, so I just it wanted to time. make sure. I was I was thinking about doing one of my sassy bits, but then I was just like, I don't want somebody to, to <laughs> clip chimp me and <laughs> give me a clip. <laughs> who? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, let's avoid this one. Just again, I want to point out that it was a couple weeks ago where Flowers used the word uppity to describe someone. Uh, that's true. You didn't yeah. do that. Yeah. He was, try- he was trying his hardest not to say, what's, not what's, to finish it. There's nothing wrong with that. What's yeah. wrong with that's uppity? A, no, there's don't worry about it. Okay, well, I'll just put it out there. It's, New York City riot. Okay, so what were we rioting about in New York City? Sparked by a giveaway by Kai Sinat. Okay. 
Okay, so he he doesn't know any. He doesn't of know it. him. He no. doesn't know any. I, of it. All I know about Kai so, Sinat is he's a hugely popular like IRL streamer. That's it. Yeah. yeah. So you do know him. So yeah. So Kai Sinat, uh, I think he made like a tweet or some sort of post announcement saying, "Hey everyone, I'm going to be in New York City, Times Square at this time yeah. in this place, yeah. and we're going to be doing giveaways." I don't know if it was like PlayStation Five or if it was he, like PlayStation Five and streaming gear. It was perfect. like we want you to if you want to stream, make it easier. Exactly. So he's idea. like, hey, in his mind, he's probably thinking like oh yeah sweet we're gonna do like a giveaway yeah oh i see mr beast do this stuff all the time okay except for mr beast he usually does not announce where he's going to be because absolutely there's going to be like a freaking crowd of people it'll be a rush it'll be crazy when he did mr beast burgers in a mall he had a team of security people yes. around him even though there were thousands of people in the mall like he there was a plan there Plus, was he infrastructure makes, he makes edited constructed videos whereas yes. Kai's like a live stream. Everything's live. Yeah. So essentially what happened was hundreds of people showed up to this thing, crowded all of the streets in New York, and people started using like the mass amount of people uh to start fucking rioting. So there's clips of like this woman who climbed up onto a stoplight and started like twerking on top of the spot the <laughs> that stoplight. Was nice. What the fuck? We're okay with that one. It was great. It was great. Mm. Uh, but then other people like legit started rioting. Like, just breaking shit. Uh, Kai tried to get away in his big car. So it was like a big kind of like black like SUV. Yeah. And there were people holding onto the car. Maybe like five or six what? people holding onto the oh. car as he's driving away. And people are just like rolling off of it. So at the end of the day, Kai was actually arrested. And uh, don't quote me on this, but I think it was specifically for inciting a riot. Inciting a riot. What is wrong with these fucking people? What was it? Something unlawful assembly, stuff like that. It was, yeah. it was a scene from a zombie movie. What? It itself, was, it was fuck. So they're just, it's just like, all right, there's enough dudes around here. Let's start breaking shit. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah they're fighting each other. And I mean, this happens in like, uh, what was it? Black Fl Friday. Whenever you are giving away something, people naturally will fight over it. Especially if you are not doing it in a sanctioned way or in a way in which there are security and some semblance of order if you're just saying fight over this playstation 5 <laughs> they're gonna fucking fight over the playstation 5 <laughs> and and also they'll see the opportunity to just start shit so yeah it was not good and now he's in jail oh is he in jail or was he just oh, charged he is just charged he is just charged yeah. i don't know if he's actually in jail i yeah. imagine he's at least not on bail yeah he's probably out yeah, on bail because he can he can afford whatever like yeah. bail they throw at him um, but either way, like, I think that this is a pretty good precedent or kind of like incident yeah. for other content creators to learn from. Uh, I think Mizkiff as a joke, I saw this clip on live stream fails, uh, was like in Florida and was going, giving away a PlayStation, come find me. And there weren't the hundreds of thousands of people that, you know, showed up for the freaking uh, yeah. Kai thing. But still, there were five, six people there within 15 minutes, just in like a random area of Florida. Yeah. Damn. So it's like, some of these fans are crazy, but I would be, it would be difficult for me to believe that every single person who was there in that uh, riot area was a fan of Kai or even knew who Kai was. I think that there was just a lot of people there who were trying to Yeah, once people get the, the word that you're getting free shit, you're coming. I'm yeah. coming. I hear free food. I'm on the way. Mm. So more wholesome side of meeting fans from streams and stuff. Mm -hmm. So when I wasn't casting LCS this week, I was just shit posting in the chat on the days that I wasn't on. Yeah. And Slumdog666, our guy that we met at Venice Beach, hey. Hey. Of Pastor's yeah. Couch, he was in Twitch chat. And so he tagged me. He was like, hey, what's up, man? And I was like, oh shit, Slumdog666. I remember you, bro. Venice Beach. Let's fucking go. Let's go. And then he, he asked, he was like, where the fuck is Raz? Why is he not on the show today? I was like, he rode his bike into a tree, bro. He's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> He's, he was like, oh, damn, I hope he gets better soon. I love so, you, Slumdog666. So six, six, six. Slumdog's looking out for you, bro. Appreciate you, Slumdog. What's up, bro? That's our guy. Uh, <laughs> into a tree. I'm into a tree. Dude, every time I've said that to somebody, not every time, but like a few times, they're like, dude, just lie. Just say <laughs> something else. Say you're like, we're say, saving someone in a burning building. You were in Montgomery. Yeah, say you're in Montgomery. You're like, say you're doing something else. Say you got checked by a tree isn't inspiring. <laughs> yeah. Um, Flowers, as I understand it, 
you know of some other Twitch streamers who are up to no good? So, one in particular. So, in the League of Legends streaming world right now, there were a bunch of, like, high-ranked players from EU and NA who... They're not, not like, pro players, but high-ranked streamers, right? Solo queue guys. And they decided they wanted to go to Korea to climb Korean solo queue. It's always been a popular thing to do because if you don't play in Korea, everybody says no matter how good you are, you're still shit because Korea is harder to climb mm -hmm. in. So, they're over there. They're climbing. They're trying to do some stuff. And then earlier today, just like, damn, all these accounts suddenly get banned. Ooh. And it's like, well, now, hold on. That's a little strange. Why would all these guys' accounts be getting banned? And so it turns out, based on the information that I gathered from, like, the, the Twitter and Reddit stuff, is they were all staying in, like, the same hotel in Korea. And one of them was TF Blade. Now, mm. TF Blade, I've met in person. And in person, chill dude. Online, not quite as much. TF Blade got banned for two weeks for toxicity, and then a viewer like gave him another account, yep. and so then he started playing on that one. And so as he keeps playing on more accounts that are that he shouldn't be doing because you're circumventing the ban, which yeah. you're not supposed to do, like it's against terms of service and shit like that. Like one of the other players said he ran into a Korean pro in solo queue, and that Korean pro said, I'm gonna get all these fucking NA accounts banned mm. because he was just pissed at having to deal with TF Blade's toxicity. And so apparently, because they were aware that TF Blade was circumventing the ban by skipping to different accounts, they IP banned him, but IP banning someone who's in a hotel, IP bans the entire hotel, so then all of the streamers can't play. So TF Blade got the Riot Exterminatus IP cannon called down on the hotel <laughs> by being excessively toxic. Wow, that is the story wow. that I... <laughs> Yep. As I understand it. Holy shit. Yep. And this is just straight off of the TF Blade uh, LS drama that happened, which was just TF Blade once again in solo queue when he played against um, LS. Flaming LS. So, and then, of course, TF Blade comes out on Twitter saying, look, this is just who I am. <laughs> no, yeah, that was his answer yeah. to all this. He was like, look, if I knew they were going to IP ban me, I wouldn't have skipped it. I wouldn't have used different accounts. And, and, Cause all this problem. But the thing is, I'm always going to get mad. I know I'm toxic. I just can't not tell these guys how fucking bad they yes! are. If people are, if people are inting me because I, I play to win. And I'm like, I don't Dude. think this was the response, man. <laughs> I don't think this was the play. Okay. All I'm saying is that we want the League of Legends scene, if we want it to be a little bit more spicy, just TF Blade, all he needs to do is send out a tweet saying, Korean pro come meet me outside this fucking hotel in the parking lot and we'll see what's up. <laughs> He's getting close to that. I'm not going to lie. He's getting closer and closer. And the thing is, what makes this really difficult is to actually have a Korean account if you're not from Korea. Pretty hard. You need the Korean equivalent of like a social security number. Yeah, yeah that's a government actually, thing. Yeah. That is technically, if for whatever reason, the government wants to put their fist up your ass, <laughs> that's identity theft in a weird way. So, like, I remember I heard that when I was in China because I was like, yeah, I would like a Korean account, mostly because the Chinese uh, servers are usually behind a little bit. So, I was like, so I can just be up on the patch. It was like, okay, that makes sense. He, you, here's the accounts. Otherwise, if you do what everyone else does, you're just kind of fucked. You should not do that ever. Uh, a TLDR timeline of the situation. This was posted by LCS EV, which is one of those, like, Pokemon accounts that tracks yeah, all the, yeah, yeah. the pro league stuff. TF Blade starts by flaming Korean pro players, YouTubers, etc. Uh, Korea starts posting about it on FM Korea and other Korean forums. Yep. Detention, an NA streamer, he's actually Best Zoe in North America. He's the one of the streamers that I do actually recognize. I don't know who most of these guys are, okay. but he's, he's played in my stream on my viewer games before. Got in game with a pro player, and that pro player said he would get detention banned. TF Blade then gets a two-week ban for being toxic. Yep. TF Blade decides to get on a new account and play on that one. And while he's playing on that new account, every streamer with a non-Riot account gets banned. Boom. <laughs> by the IP exterminator. Jesus. Well, that's, the, that's interesting. So, yeah, we've got some... Uh, we got some drama going down in Korean streaming land. Drop the hashtag calculated in the chat yep. after that. I don't know. I think it's kind of like a, it's a dick move for everyone all around because one, the Korean pro snitched, but then two, shouldn't have been pulling that shit in the first yeah, place. Yeah. In the end of the day, it just comes down to, even though, let's say in a random world, he gets hit anyways because he's using an account that he shouldn't be. Um, yeah. You shouldn't normalize flaming. Like... There's going to be multiple people. There's going to be multiple people that will flame, get called out, recognize, 
yeah, I know that's wrong. I understand why I'm banned. Boom. Right. But he's like, I, this is who I am and I will not change. I will keep calling dogs on the rift dogs on the rift dude stay toxic like, stay spicy as long as you keep the slurs out of it stay fucking entertaining that's all i'm gonna, that's all i gotta say if lcs was calling people freaking your trash if we had like 10 double ifs just talking trash you can't control himself at least be able to control yourself i want i want a mess i want <laughs> someone who is an absolute fucking mess to insert themselves in the esports scene. I want to be a fucking mess and just create drama and trouble everywhere I go. That's how it's fun. So basically, what we're going to say is for next episode of Caster's Couch, I'm going to break Raz's other arm. Hey! Well, you're going to really have a problem jerking off now. Yeah! <laughs> I'm going to start I need to learn how to jerk I, off with I my think feet. There's a, a legendary Reddit thread about someone who broke yep. both of their arms. <laughs> Oh and if you want to see Raz jerk off with his feet, go <laughs> ahead and join the Caster's Couch Discord as well as subscribe to the Caster's Couch Patreon. We're going to have some super special content coming out there eventually. Uh, thank you all Hopefully so, so much for Raz watching. Content, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be good Raz <laughs> feet jerk content. Off content. It's going to be so good foot jerk off content. Uh, thank you guys all so much for watching, and we will see you next time. I'll, I'll teach you. I don't think we can. All I'm that. saying is maybe, Peace maybe stuff. one Patreon, a lucky Patreon, can, <laughs> can jerk. <laughs> wait, wait, we have a special five hundred dollar tier, and that person just gets to be your personal. Jerk. Yeah, be my left hand. Stop. Oh God, we don't need that.